Hey everybody, welcome back to Cozy Conversations. My name is Sarah. And my name is Taryn. And we are so excited to have another guest on our podcast today for our Ministry and Purpose series. And if you haven't listened to the other episodes in um, the season yet, I would encourage you to go ahead and check those out on um, our Spotify and our YouTube. So definitely give those a listen to if you haven't heard them yet. Yes, definitely. We've been so excited about what the Lord has done through this season so far. And I am so excited about the guests that we have on for you today. Um, I want to introduce you to Lori. Um, Lori is um, just a sweet friend. I've known her almost my entire life. Um, <laughs> long, long time. We uh, grew up, I she uh, we both went to the same church that I grew up in. So um, spent many years um, just involved in church together, doing some ministry together. And um, I've just always loved her heart for the Lord and her heart for others and just how she's faithfully served him um, throughout all the years I've known her. So I'm so excited to um, have you on the podcast, Lori. So thank you for doing this. Thank you. <laughs> You're so sweet. Well, to jump in, um, can you just kind of introduce yourself and tell tell everybody a little bit about yourself? Oh, uh, what about myself? I am a grandma times 10, <laughs> which is, you know, amazing. Um, so yeah, I grew up in a Christian home, um, about four years old. I realized I needed Jesus, <laughs> you know, um, and I know it was young, but that was, it was such a formative point, you know, and it, it shaped everything moving forward and um as as you mature age-wise then your understanding of God and your need for him continues to grow and um so it just kind of progressed from there I have four adult children my three girls are married and then all the grandkids and I collect people so I have four more that I consider grandchildren um and yeah I just absolutely love to serve I love to pour into people disciple pray everything in life is centered around prayer and how I can utilize it and so yeah and I love tea and I love you know cozy cozy is the thing and you know I it's I collect mugs it's terrible but if they're cute I collect mugs there's a lot I love that (laughs) that's awesome (laughs) I love that so much. Um, Well, we're super excited to have you here. Um, Speaking of, you know, just your heart for ministry, can you talk a little bit about how the Lord kind of um, drew your heart to ministry over the years? Yep, absolutely. Um, I think initially it started when I was about 12 or 13 years old. I read the biography of George Mueller and he worked with orphans in England. But what struck me about him was his faith and his prayer life. And I remember telling God, I want faith like that. I had no idea the circumstances that you then end up having to walk through to develop strong faith. <laughs> but but I really, really wanted that. And then um, I think when one of the churches that we were in, um, this is kind of what started my heart for, for students and wanting to do more. Um, uh, my deacon and his wife, their, uh, their children were grown. They were adults. But this couple was involved in the foster care system, specifically teenage girls. And through the time that I knew them, they ended up adopting a couple of these girls who were going to otherwise age out of the system. And I just really, really, really loved these girls and loved working with them. And a few years later, I was at a ladies retreat and the topic was Titus two women, you know, and Titus two talks about the older women encouraging the younger women but something that the speaker said that weekend really struck a chord in my heart and she said every woman is an older woman to someone else so when you're in your mid-20s and you're looking at people in their 50s and 60s and 70s going I need you to teach me to be told you're actually an older woman for someone else Mm -hmm. and I'm like oh I like that you know (laughs) and it's it's something that I've, I've used you know um God opened the door to allow me to be involved in student ministry in different capacities for a long time. But that was between that and watching 
the great example of servanthood in like my dad and in my grandparents and everything. I just have always wanted to serve in some capacity. That's awesome. <laughs> it is awesome. And you, you do it very well. Um, a big part of this ministry and purpose series is about being ministry minded within whatever season the Lord has you in within whatever circumstances he has placed you. Mm -hmm. You have faithfully served him through years of being chronically ill. Um, what are, if you don't mind sharing, what are some ways that you do ministry within the confines and limitations of chronic illness? That's, that's a, that's a fun one. Um, I was in a season of serving when I was suddenly struck with fibromyalgia and chronic fatigue and, um, actually had to spend several years at home. And in that season, I think it was in that season, maybe a little bit before that, um, first and foremost, ministry begins at home, mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and that is, that is something that I have held to for a very, very long time. And so it doesn't matter what I'm doing in the church. If I'm not ministering to my own family, then I'm failing, yeah. <laughs> you know, yeah. and failing is probably not the right word, but, um, ministry begins at home. And so, um, during that time, that I had to stop whatever other ministry I was doing. Um, I focused more on um, learning how to better minister to my family and also learning that my home is a ministry. No matter at that time, we had a tiny, tiny little house. Now we have a bigger house, but um, I wanted my home to be a place of peace and safety and refuge for anybody who walked through the doors of that house. Yeah. And I would often pray, especially like if the windows were open and the breeze was flowing through, I'd be like, God, would you please let your Holy spirit be the, that blows through here. Like the wind blows through the windows, just be a place, you know, and, and we've had, you know, from that tiny little house and, um, and my illness and everything, we did respite foster care one time. Um, we've had two families living under one roof multiple times um, and countless, um, just I, I hosted small groups from my home for a little bit before the fibro took over. Um, my girls would bring friends home and there'd be times of ministry, you know, just different things in and out. Basically, um, the home is a lifestyle of ministry for everything. And so that's, um, that's some of what I did. And then as I was able to start getting out more and kind of balancing more, I did actually jump back into student ministry for a bit. Yes. And that is an incredibly humbling experience to be, because by this point I was in my forties and, you know, who's going to want to hang around with somebody my age, but, um, the girls were all amazing because I was not the normal, energetic, crazy youth leader. I was the quiet, subdued one. So I drew the quieter girls for sure. And sometimes some of the guys, but um, the kids really appreciated having a mom figure around and they, they started calling me mama dads <laughs> for a yeah. lot of different things. But what was really neat in that is that they saw my weaknesses and they didn't turn me away, you know, or mm -hmm. think less of me. And, you know, it, it's really humbling, you know, to, okay, I'm going to retreat this weekend. It's going to be great. And then get hit with severe pain in the middle of the night to the point where you're throwing up and you're there to serve the students and they're instead serving you mm -hmm. but God still used all of that to work together for his glory mm -hmm. because it just I don't know how to explain it even I mean the kids were it was it was neat to see um compassion growing out of them and how they they watched how I handled the pain and so when they were having emotional pain or whatever, it's like, how can we walk this? 
you know I don't know if any of that makes yeah. sense but it was it does yeah you know, it, it was really kind of neat and I learned that there's a lot you can learn from younger people and it's wonderful so yeah. that's, that's really cool I've done it reminds me too of just what um the bible says about you know in our weaknesses you know mm -hmm. then the lord you know works through that um yeah. so that's definitely really encouraging just to think about and how your your testimony of your life was even shown to the st your students during that time and they were able to learn so much from you mm -hmm. um, then yeah yeah it was it was pretty incredible and it's very humbling to see how god can use us in our weaknesses and yet it's also so beautiful you know yeah absolutely so jumping into the next question um kind of a follow-up to that what are some of the lessons the lord has taught you through being chronically ill that there's beauty in suffering um i might cry <laughs> first and foremost um my precious jesus suffered for my sake and for my sin and so um why should I expect any less? You know, I'm not in some country being persecuted for my faith, but, but just, you know, there, there is suffering in the daily life. And, um, there's, there's been some really beautiful, um, imagery that I think about, um, in the season that I was, that was home for a bit before I was able to begin serving again. I, did a lot of research on suffering and <laughs> I have this poor little Bible that I call my suffering Bible because it was just literally, it was what I was using and it was beginning to fall apart. And, um, all of, all of my, uh, my students knew about my suffering Bible. And so a few years ago when we had a house fire, they were relieved to hear that we were able to pay the suffering Bible. <laughs> but, but there's, what are some of the things that the world finds valuable oil um we need oil as resources and this is definitely not the prettiest of all the examples but you have to go deep to find the oil uh something else that the world finds very very valuable silver and gold well silver and gold in order to be of value have to be refined and that means being held over the flame and that's hot you know that that hurts yeah. um and yet when it has been heated up and up and all of the dross has been pulled off then the silversmith or the goldsmith can see his reflection in it and he knows it is good and it's like i want i want my suffering to end up reflecting christ you know, and reflecting God's glory. Yeah. Um, think about pearls. They're so valuable, but how are they formed? Through pain, <laughs> you know? Something itty and tiny gets into the, the oyster and causes them great pain. So to cover it up, you end up getting this beautiful little piece out of it. And then diamonds and other gems are found in deep, dark places, but they're not pulled out this really sparkly thing not only are they in the deep and the dark but they have to be chipped away at and polished and a couple years ago I was thinking about it and I'm like you know if gold or silver or diamonds could talk <laughs> would they like to be held to the flame <laughs> would they like being chipped away at I don't know you know um but sometimes you have to go into the dark places to find that there really is beauty there, you know, and, and that's what it was for me. It's, you know, the dark places of the, the pain and the uncertainty, but finding the beauty in God's character and the beauty in his word and his promises and um, that this is, momentary light affliction and if i'm not mistaken when that was written wasn't that written about the time that christians were being persecuted and fed to the lions and stuff like this and paul calls it momentary and light mm -hmm. yeah. you know and so yeah. those are those are some of the um the lessons that god showed me through that 
Yeah. That's what an amazing and powerful testimony. Like, I I just love that. That's so encouraging to me for sure. Um, And I'm sure will be extremely encouraging to everyone who listens to this. So thank you Mm -hmm. for sharing. What is one of your favorite Bible passages and what has the Lord taught you through it? There's a lot. I, my, the one that I camp on for the most for my, um, for my life verses are uh, James one, two through four. That say, consider it all joy or pure joy, my brothers, when you encounter various trials, knowing that the testing of your faith produces endurance, and let endurance have its perfect result, so that you may be perfect and complete, lacking in nothing. So that's one that definitely um, stands out to me. And there's quite a few others, like out of First Peter, he's laying out everything that Christ has done for us and that he is our living hope. And then he says, in this you greatly rejoice, even though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been distressed by various trials so that the proof of your faith being more precious than gold, which is perishable, even though tested by fire may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Yeah. So, and then one more, because it's so good. And because of the gospel, because of everything that Christ has done for us, we do not lose heart. But though our outer man is decaying, yet our inner man is being renewed day by day. For momentary light affliction is producing for us an eternal weight of glory far beyond all comparison. While we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. And yeah, just hanging on to that because this this is all temporary. This mm-hmm. is just the skin suit is not going to last for all, ever anyway. And some of us decay a little more rapidly than others, but God's got something better. Yeah. So beautiful. I love all of those passages. Thank you <laughs> so much for sharing. <laughs> um, I personally have witnessed your passion for prayer, hospitality, and discipleship throughout your years of being um, chronically ill and your whole life, but uh, specifically since I've known you, um, that's always really stood out to me. Um, Can you share how these things have looked differently throughout the seasons you've walked through? Yep. As you know, um, I texted you about this earlier. Um, it's, It's been interesting because sometimes... I have felt great and except for a little bit of extra fatigue, there hasn't been any, any other um, issues or anything, but so humbling when, when you guys reached out and asked for me to be the guest, it was, I had been struggling personally because um, just kind of beating myself up because for the last few weeks, it's like, you know what, for the last year, my prayer life has not been um what it used to be and I kept thinking about David in Psalm 42 um he's like my soul why are you so downcast he's like I remember that I used to walk with many leading the festive procession to the house of God with joyful thankful shouts and what am I doing now and um and I keep thinking at that because where I am right now is um for the last four and a half years, I have been the main caregiver for my mother-in-law. And while she was not physically challenging, she had a very, very broken past. And instead of holding on to her faith, she chose bitterness. And um, so it was really, really hard. And um, it created a lot of caregiver burnout and fatigue. And so I'm currently in a season of healing from that. And for, um, for the last year, many of my prayers have simply been God help. And I firmly believe in the power of prayer and a lifestyle of prayer. And I've had a great prayer life in the past, just not in this season. But something that came to mind as I was praying about uh, this and everything, it's that um, burnout is a part of ministry. And it doesn't mean that I have failed. It means I'm human. Um, And I've learned through this that God is my default setting, which is very comforting (laughs) to know because um, I could just as easily have turned to bitterness over the frustrations of 
not being able to do more than literally just get out of bed. You know, it has been, it has been really, really bad. Um, but I've learned that others are watching how I respond in this time. Um, I've seen that um, while my prayer life isn't currently as vibrant as it has been in the past, that it's still there. And that when I pray for others, my eyes are taken off of myself and I'm reminded of the great importance of praying for each other. And I've watched how others have prayed for, that I pray for have actually been led to reach out to me, not knowing that I'm going through a burnout. They'll just send a text. Hey, I'm praying for you. Or here's these song lyrics for you today. And all of that together is God reminding me that he is all right, that he sees me. And so, um, yeah, it's just, it's definitely, it's hard because you're catching me in a season of rough, <laughs> you know, really, really rough. And yet, even in that season, like, somebody I'm currently ministering to is a young mom who is recently a single mom, like over the last year. And um, so something that I think is really neat and important is that in some ways, pain is pain. Whether you have um, physical pain or emotional pain, um, your circumstances don't have to be the same but you can't understand pain. And so this um, gives me the opportunity to minister to others out of how I've been ministered to, mostly by the Holy Spirit and everything that God has taught me and shown me. And um, I'll tell you that no matter what season you're in, when somebody shares their pain with you they're giving you a gift that says they trust you to handle them carefully and so um yeah it's it's been very humbling and it's just been a reminder that um it's not about me <laughs> you know that god is still able to re receiving honor and glory through whatever I do, whether it's much or whether it's little. And that um, even little can become much if he is in it. And so that's the lesson that he's currently reminding me of as I am walking this space. <laughs> so, Yes, yes. I, I absolutely, that is just such a powerful, powerful testimony. And I know we were messaging back a little today, but you know, I actually, I love hearing you talk about that because, you know, our heart for this season is really like talking about the true heart of ministry. And it's like, mm -hmm. you've had very, you know, powerful seasons where you've been able to do a lot and you've had yeah. seasons where, you know, you can't do very much at all because of yeah. your physical limitations, but your heart for ministry is still there. You always, mm -hmm. you get up and you choose the Lord every day. You look at, you yeah. know, even if it's very, you know, you know, very small, you feel like it's small compared to what you used to be able to do. Like you are so mm -hmm. steadfast with choosing him each day, looking for the ministry opportunities he gives you. And like, that is the heart of this season is like ministry yeah. is just really serving and honoring the Lord right where he has you, whatever yeah. your circumstances might be. And, you know, like I was, we were, <laughs> I was messaging you this too. <laughs> I think, you know, I think in the church, we have this, you know, definition of ministry as being, you know, so focused on what we do and like doing all these things yes like you know when you've been in the trenches of you know a chronic illness like you learn pretty quickly like like the lord reminds you that even those little things like even if all you can do is get out of bed and minister to a family member mm -hmm. that is just as powerful in the kingdom of god as if you were leading a youth retreat you know because yep. that's what the lord wants from us is just a surrendered heart and a surrendered life and absolutely um, to serve him with you know every moment we have in whatever mm -hmm. capacity we have you know that he's exactly. allowed us to have and so i i'm so sorry that this season <laughs> has been difficult for you 
but um, that testimony you have out of it is so powerful. And it's, I know it's blessed me and (laughs) our listeners too, for sure. So, Well, I hope so. (laughs) No, no, thank you. It's thank you for being willing to willing to share with us and be just very honest with us. Um, You have ministered, as you've mentioned to young people a lot. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think it's fitting to ask, um, what is one piece of advice you would give to young people? I have been thinking about that. And it's like, I still haven't landed on something for that. My brain goes so many different places, but like hold, hold fast to Christ, you know, and um, keep your eyes fixed on him at, at all times. And, um, you know, I think too, in today's world, we're coming up against so many things. I mean, really, truly we are. And um, it can really be easy to judge what a person's going through by how they're behaving or how they look or whatever. And something that that I've learned, I've learned as I've been praying and everything is the Imago Day, um, and how we are all made in the image of God. And, um, and each person has value and dignity and worth and take time to get to know them. And I think for young girls, especially, I would say, start looking for somebody that you can pour into. You know, you're young, but you are an older woman to someone else. And just like you girls are doing with this podcast, actually, you know, and some of the, your, you know, your, your aim is college students and everything and find someone to pour into and you know, always looking, of course, for somebody to pour into you and, you know, somebody to be an accountability person. Um, but as you're looking for someone to pour into, be open to asking God to lead you to that person instead of, this is the type of person I want to pour into. Um, ask God to direct that for you. And you don't know, you might come up against somebody who's got really rough edges <laughs> where you're going to need to remember this person is made in the image of God and they have great value and are worthy of dignity and respect. And I don't know if any of that makes sense, <laughs> yes, absolutely. but, um, but I think that, yeah, there's a lot that we can do. There's a lot of people hurting. Um, and especially among the the unsaved or even some people in the church and they're just really struggling with identity or whatever. And um, if if we can remember that and even use that to help share with them that they're not, that their identity is not who they're attracted to or anything, but their identity should be God. Mm -hmm. And there's so much that we can do to pour in love and encouragement and share God's grace that has been so richly given to us. Amen. That is fantastic advice. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, What is one ministry book or resource that has helped you grow spiritually that you would recommend? Okay. Well, I actually have a couple. Uh Um, One is by um, Elisa Morgan, uh, Lisa Morgan. I don't know. It's called, she did what she could. And I absolutely love that because um, I came across that, I think, actually at the beginning of my illness. Um, And like, I have a tiny house. I have poor health. I don't have much money. What can I do for the kingdom? And it's like, you do what you can. And it's it's so great. It's a short read. um, But she emphasizes each word in the sentence like she did what she could she did what she could you know kind of like that but um then at the end of each chapter she gives little short examples of women who did what they could and it didn't feel my like much but it's something and um 
you know, because sometimes we can have these big ideas. Well, I can't be impactful until I have this set in order and that set in order. No, you don't. You just start where you are, you know, and, and it's really good. And then um, the other one, or maybe two, um, <laughs> your, um, Sarah, your aunt brought this book up a couple of weeks ago um, by Rosaria Butterfield, yeah. that the gospel comes of a house key. Um, mm -hmm. I had heard Rosaria give interviews about this book that she was doing. And um, I'm like, I have got to get this book and read it because the concept of it resonates with what I want to do and how I view the home and the ministry that flows from it. And oh man, I just sucked that book down last year. Um, <laughs> but it was, it was so good and so practical and um, in different ways that you can, can do that. And um, so, yeah, those are, those are two books that I highly recommend. Um, they just, I, they've really done a lot for me, you know, just encouragement, direction, ideas, um, and how I can use what I have to serve God in the season that I'm in. And they apply for all the seasons, you know, um, and that God just wants our obedience and, mm -hmm. and everything. And I think that those books kind of lay that out real well. That's amazing. Um, I love that. I can't wait. I haven't read either of those, so I. Oh, they're good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, definitely have to check those out. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. Um, well, uh, on every podcast episode, we play a quick little game. Um, to get to know our guests a little better. Okay, so let's play a quick little round of this or that. Um, and we can all answer these. So, um, the first one is: Do you like cookies or candy? definitely cookies <laughs> Sarah I would agree cookies I was working I work from home and today I was working and all of a sudden I had a craving for some cookies so I ran downstairs oh, no. and I had made um cookie dough the other week so I popped them in the oven real fast <laughs> have you ever done like the cookie in a mug in the microwave yes Karen and I used to do oh, that those are in our so dorm ridiculous. it's bad <laughs> oh, yeah. it was so much fun <laughs> Yeah, I'm with you guys. Cookies for the win. <laughs> um, yeah, especially those mug cookies. So good. Oh, man. <laughs> the next one is um, text or phone call. I prefer a phone call. I'll text if I have to, but I like talking to the person, yeah. you know. Yeah. But I'll do both in a heartbeat. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Sarah. Hmm. I would do both, but I definitely text more during the day. And if you're Taryn, then you also receive a bunch of audio messages from me. So <laughs> yes. that almost does that count as a phone call? Not really, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm with that. I do like both, probably text at this point in my life. Yeah, my daughter says it's a generation thing. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Um, rain or snow? Oh, no. <laughs> I have Either. to pick one? <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. Oh, rain or snow are my favorite. Okay, so if it's spring and summer, I want rain. If it's winter, I want snow. Does it count? I love both yes. so much. <laughs> that is literally my exact answer. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I think the term for somebody who loves rain is a pluviophile uh-huh yep. give me a That's good something. thunderstorm anytime but also yes. I love the snow <laughs> yes we live in a good state for the snow <laughs> we really do not this year but yeah yeah most years <laughs> Sarah uh, I would definitely say rain uh this Californian doesn't get much snow uh yeah. or rain so I definitely do love a good a good thunderstorm too, like you mentioned, Lori. We had a snowstorm back in January here in I live in Virginia now. And I let me tell you, I was texting Taryn because I was at work <laughs> that day. I was like, how do I drive in this? What route <laughs> do I take home? And her whole family, they were helping me with advice and stuff. So <laughs> definitely rain. Yeah. I'm gonna stay away from the snow. <laughs> oh great. Um, fruit or veggies? Um, that's another tough one. Probably veggies. I would say fruit. 
been loving my mini or oranges lately. So yes, mini those are good. <laughs> I think I'm probably fruit too. Anything that resembles sugar, I'm gonna go for. <laughs> <laughs> um next is treehouse or cave. Which would you rather live in? Treehouse. I'm claustrophobic. Cave would not be good. Yeah. <laughs> but treehouse sounds fun. Yeah. I'm treehouse too. <laughs> <laughs> I agree. Treehouse. Yeah. 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 All right. Last this or that question is pancakes or waffles? Hmm. I think waffles. Depends on the day. I would say pancakes, I think. Yeah. I, yeah. I could not. I keep going back and forth. I think pancakes. But like also waffles, if they're the good kind, like the like big <laughs> Belgian waffle kind, Bloody. you know, not just like the toaster kind. <laughs> they yeah. just get those and do crepes. <laughs> oh yeah, there you go. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> oh, so fun. Well, thank you so much for um playing and Lori, thank you so much for just being willing to share and like um just pour your heart out. Um, I we just really really appreciate that, and I know it's encourage me I know it's going to encourage everyone who listens to this so yeah. um okay. thank you so much for that um as we wind down um we have our two last questions and the first is one that we ask all of our guests um and just to, it's so fun to hear their different personalities come out but um the question is what sounds cozy to you I would really like to put on some sweats right now and make a nice hot cup of chai and curl up under a blanket mm -hmm. and watch a movie. That's what sounds really good right now. That sounds <laughs> fantastic. I want to do that too now. <laughs> I love that. Um, so cozy. Um, and then to wrap up, um, we have our cozy cue that we'll all answer. And um, that is, would you rather give up social media or texting for an entire year? Social media, because my girl, I've got several family group chats that, you know, we could all make phone calls and everything, but we're all scattered across the states. And um, yeah, we just keep those rolling social media anytime I need to keep those group chats <laughs> yeah I'm the same I would get rid of social media just for the sake of still being able to text everyone mm -hmm. <laughs> I agree I'm definitely the same I would give up social media just to be able to still text yeah because that's more relational really right yeah it's in your sphere so right yeah. I mean social media could be too but it's different often more impersonal so right yeah mm -hmm. yeah exactly um well that brings us to the end of our cozy conversation for today um, <laughs> thanks again Lori, so much for um thanks joining for having us. us yes yeah, thank and you. i hope you do get to curl up with that with that cup of chai and that blanket and watch a it, movie i might even throw some yarn in there so that i can work on something but yes, yes. well everyone <laughs> until next time Take